and I'm going to do pop-up books right before your very eyes. Okay. So, uh, and you may want to refer to this. I did put some photographs up. You have the lesson plan, but it's incredibly confusing. So I am planning on having uh, some private Zooms. I would say uh, Sunday and Monday will be my best day for Zooms. And I understand if you can't get it done on time. All right, so let's go back to Sam. Remember Sam? The cactus, yes. Yeah, Sam the cactus, okay. So um, here's, here's what I, Here's what I have. I, um, I have my first page. And the reason I'm going to use a slightly smaller cardboard for my cover is because I've used the cheesy um, paper for the sample because I'm cheap. The uh, bristle board is so expensive that I'm too cheap to use it for myself. Um, you can see this kind of curls up a little bit. It doesn't hold water as well. Um, but it, you can use it, but it's just not as strong. Okay, uh, so I decided that I wanna do a couple things with my page. So this is, uh, wait, that's my second page. Let's do, that's the interior. Let's do the exterior first. So here's our outdoor scene. And I'm gonna have to show you how to make these things. Uh, now, I'll just get the Z strip out of the way because it's the easiest thing. All it is, is it's a tiny, let me go into my garbage and get a little piece of note card. It is a tiny little strip. Sometimes if you have a big shape, you'll have to use more than one. Don't have it hang out too long. Uh, and then all you do with this, can you all see that? Yes. Okay. Uh, you glue one end to your object and the other end to the book. And you use, and you use Elmer's glue to do it. Uh, you, there are times in your book when you can use our trusty glue stick, uh, which is right here. But this is not one of them. Anything that, that needs strength has to be done with the Elmer's glue all. This is the kind of glue you should have not school glue. School glue has detergent added to it, so it comes out of clothes. This does not. And this is strong, so this is glue. And school glue might as well be detergent. So it doesn't work. It falls apart. So that's a Z-strip. Everybody's book should have at least one example of a Z-strip. All right. So that's that. I've shown you that one. Now, this particular page I already cut out and I'm planning on putting uh, Sam who's, this is the unhappy Sam, he's not smiling. Uh, and I'm gonna put him on this stair step but I'm gonna show you how to plan your stair steps. Okay. Um, so I use my meow mix cups. If you have a cat, uh, you must, occasionally use Meow Mix because you will get the greatest, greatest cups for free. So all I'm gonna do is use my glue brush and the way I, the way I tell P, my students how much glue to put on because a lot of kids just like to dig in and have it drip all over. I always say, if you're afraid to hold it over your head, you have too much glue. And I do it usually, and I can't show you now because I don't wanna share the screen um, with myself anymore. Uh, it, I do it by holding it over my head the entire time while I'm explaining what too much glue means. And they are riveted, their eyeballs are right on my head waiting for anything to drop, but I make sure it's not going to. Okay, so that's how to know how much glue. I, I absolutely love um, glue brushes because they give you a really neat bond. Uh, they don't slime around. Kids love to take glue. Now I'm just gonna sort of set this here. Tap it down a little. Kids love to take glue and I'm gonna give you a demo. They'll just take glue and they'll turn it upside down. They'll use two hands and they'll go like this and they'll get glue everywhere. And it's a total 
mess. Okay, so there's, there's uh, our first scene. Now, Sam, the cactus, this can go with uh, a glue stick because this is not under any stress. This is defying gravity. This is not. Anything that defies gravity, you really want to use some of glue on, okay? So now I just glued this and I'm going to stick it down here for my story. Okay, so there's page one. Now. Professor. Yes. Can my background be the same if my story is all happening in the same room? I, I saw your background is the same on each page, right? Yeah, because it's happening. Yeah. Like the it, it, it can be, it would be nice to see something happen between the pages or to see a different wall. I was gonna tell you that, but um, uh, it can be, you know, I, everything depends on what the story is. Um, all right, so now this is my second page. This is the Mud River uh, bar. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to put our girlfriend here. But first, uh, I think what I wanna do is I wanna show you something fun. Uh, I'm gonna have these doors open. Now, you know, without using the X-Acto knife, you just press down with your scissors and, and up with uh, the paper and you can easily cut into this. And don't fear, it's gonna be okay. If I get off screen, let me know. I'm not always sure what you can see. You're good. You can... You're right in the center of the camera. Oh, perfect. These uh, these are sort of like the, you know, the swinging doors you see in Wild West movies. Saloon doors. It's a swinging door, and it's some bad cutting. Bad cutting. There we are. That's better. Here. Now I can't cut everywhere because I need to have the integrity of where I have my 11. I call it an 11. It's a stair step, but you make an 11. I was wondering about that. Yeah. I'm going to show you uh, how to do that. So, well, Professor, isn't this scene going to be glued to the previous scene? So, in theory, that 11 could stick to the back of no the first scene? no no okay hold the phone baby. now do you notice what i did i painted the back Ooh. <laughs> so if, if the kids would open it up they would see brown there i'm going to put a background here and i wonder if um see, i've never done this after the fact i'm gonna really risk my life Watch this. I just cut into my previous 11. That's dangerous, but I, I think it's going to work fine because I can tape it from the back. Okay, so now what I have here is this is in colored pencil, so it's a different kind of a feel. Uh, but there you've got the mud river in the background. And I'm going to tape this back here. I could glue it, but I think for the, in the interest of time, I'm going to tape it. And that's going to include taping a little bit over my 11 so that um, this one is not going to show. None of this is going to show. So you're just getting rid of it completely from that spot? No, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Pretend, I Pretend you never saw that 11. You didn't see it. Okay. But uh, you can do this and plan it ahead of time. See, I, plan, I planned this after the fact. So, but there's so many ways to repair something. And mm -hmm. so I just masking taped this. Are you gonna recut it? See, so now I have, I have the, the mud river right outside the swinging doors. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, my original 11, let me do this with marker, was from here to here. This part is already cut. What I have to do is cut this part now. You cut on the fold. 
but it's really easy because I've got, I have my marker lines right here. So I'm going to cut here and here. So I'm, I'm basically cutting in. Now, here is very important. Paper has a memory. If you ever do any origami or paper engineering of any kind, you'll know this. And um, I really recommend using the handles of the scissors for this. You're going to bend it one way and score it, put it back in place, turn around, bend it the other way, put it back in place, and put it in the middle. Then you're going to open it up like this. Take your finger, punch it through, and you have a stair step. OK, do you all see that? Yeah. I'm going to do that yeah. again, but um, not right this second. <laughs> uh, so before I put our little floozy um, in the scene, I'm going to figure out where I want my um, my Sam to go. So the first thing I have to do for a slider, because this is going to be a slider going to an 11. I think I want to plan on having her, let's see, will she fit? Will she be able to be in front of him? Uh, not by a lot. I can make her behind him. I think I'm going to make her behind him, which means that her 11 is going to be, um, it, her 11 is going to be narrower or not as big. So watch this. I think I'm going to put her 11, and now you're going to understand why I call it an 11. I'm going to put it right here. Okay, do you see why I call it an 11? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now um, I want to make a stair step. What do I need to do? Cut, Cut along the 11. <laughs> That's along the 11. Okay, then what do I need to do? Uh, oh. Paper has a memory, so I have to score it both directions. Right, I fold it up and I score it. Then what do I do? Pop it out. Other side. Other side. Pop it in place, put it up here, score it. Now my, my paper has a memory. Pop it through. Okay, so we have, we have where she's going. That's her stair step. And she's gonna be going right here. All right. Now, um, so let's make a slider. So a slider is a long sheet of paper. I think it looks best if it's colored somewhat, uh, you know, as, as to the background. So I, I just made the walls green, so he's going to be on a green one. And you can slide it for however far you want to slide it. It animates the book. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to get my trusty, fantastic uh, Elmer's glue off. And I'm just going to glue along the edge here a little bit like that. All right. And I'm going to trap this long piece of paper that's folded in the stair step. Okay, no need to worry about Sam yet because he's gonna get glued, where are you Sam? He's gonna get glued to the edge of, of the slider. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'll, I think I'll put my, I'll put my uh, story on. Let's see, I have to get my phone book. Professor, I have a quick question. Sure. I was thinking, do you remember Charlie Brown? Yes. How you never saw the adults and they were like the wop, 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 wop. Yeah, sure. I was thinking in my pop up to have like that to be the concept and I wanted to use adults' bodies and not their heads. Does that make sense to you or sound creepy? No, that sounds crazy. Like scary that kids would be characters without heads? As long as we understand that we're in a book, and so it's not going to look weird if we see just part of somebody's body. Yeah, like headless bodies. That's what so, I think. You know, everything has to be cut off according to the rectangle. You know, I would say I would try it with cheapo paper and a, a pen first to see, you know, how it looks. 
just to make sure. Uh, and then the other thing why I'm having so much tr trouble moving forward, I, I'm wrestling with the idea of making it like a sad story oh, with a sad ending. Make a sad story. My story was focusing around a pet snail having to go to the doctor and possibly not making it home. Oh, wow. The doctor's a gourmand and you want to go to the cactus. And the cactus goes down. Exactly. Oh, no! <laughs> she has too much to drink! You want to have some extra kind of I find it kind of funny, though, the snail might not survive. I mean, I know oh, that's horrible, but... Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny, like... <laughs> <laughs> so well, everybody has their own kind of humor, folks. <laughs> She's humor. Humor's like noses. Everyone has one. <laughs> She's imagining crying over a pet snail, and then Esther goes, <laughs> "Oh, it died." That's funny. I do not mind a sad story. Um, my my problem is with violence, but I've had people make violent books. No problem. Can do whatever you want to do. I want you to enjoy this class. Just understand that um, my my goal is for you to learn the process so you can use it if you ever teach it and, Got it. and so on. Um, okay, so did you all see what I did here now? Mm -hmm. So uh, when you open it up, he's like this, and he's coming up to her and they don't collide, although they could be on the same plane. We're gonna let that dry. And I put my story at the bottom. So I did put online um, how to do this. Uh, the, the back side looks like this for a slider. Um, Cause you really should have something, you know, that the, uh, oh, this got stuck, oh boy. Professor, would it be possible to put like a fastener at the end of let's say your hey, hey louder? What would it be possible to put? Um, I think it's called a fastener. It's a thing you put it, it's a like a metal thing you poke it in and the, yeah, Brad. The, uh, where no, by let's say by your by your cactus that we could put it in, let's say the end of it, and then he could like lean over and kiss her if it was by with a I think it's a fastener. Okay, wait, you're talking very fast and I didn't understand it. What, Sorry. Would, what would that do that would add to it? It could add, it can make it that. He's on the slider, but then let's say he can move on the slider and let's say lean in towards the other. Oh, way. sure. You could do that. Okay. Uh, people have done it with things like things that turn and wheels, mm -hmm. clocks and things like that. So you can use a brad and there are lots of ways to animate a pop-up book. Absolutely. So now I understand. Absolutely. Wait, what's it called? A brad. Uh, we are using these right now. It was for the the um the animated like puppet. Yeah, you know, it has two arms and a it button. Looks like that. Yeah, yeah, I know what it looks. Like. I just never knew the name. I always called them the thingies. No, those are that's called Brad's. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. That's a, that's a smart idea, actually. Okay, fun. All right, so here's for a slider, uh, two different stair steps, and um, you know, let's just see. Let me give you another test. If my character is this long, here's my character, let's pretend. Can I put it on this slider? I mean, on this uh, stair step? No, it's outside of its box. Exactly right. Uh, if my character is this long, should I? If you cut off a slight no, millimeter. I cut, just cut them off a little. Uh, this one should fit. So yeah. you can sort of measure it or eyeball it or whatever. Just make sure your book doesn't, you know, look nutty with all kinds of things sticking out of it. Now, I put this online. There's a photograph of this online, but I'm going to show you because I'm going to do it. Uh, my book is only going to have two pages, but the concern that Emilio had is real, and that is that uh, you don't want your pages to stick together. So here's my page number one, and here's my page number two. And they're gonna go together like this, okay? So here's what I've got. I'll open it up so you can see all the, I'm gluing, and in your case, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it twice because you're gonna have three pages. 
Can you see, this is gonna be the inside of the book. Yes. Very important, pay attention right now so you get this in your brain. Because this is, a lot of people have made mistakes in my class and I've had to tear books apart. You do not want any glue to go inside any of these stair steps. So the way to avoid that is when you're gonna glue the pages together, you are going to glue, you might want to give yourself a little path. You're going to glue around them. Everywhere where I have my marker, I'm going to put glue. Okay, but I'm not going to put glue here. Now, look at the other side. I don't want to glue anywhere where the other side has a figure. So, okay. Here's a test. And I'm gonna need to use some white out for you. I should have had both sides open. Can you all see why I shouldn't glue here? Yeah, there's a stair step. There's a stair step there. These, uh, this, this seems to be okay. And this seems, this, this will be better like that. But I can't go too far to this. Stay away from the stair steps. All right, so now I'm going to do some gluing. I, I wonder if I could, okay. Let's see if this will, Work. I could probably use this for this part. It doesn't really require a whole lot of glue. What it what it requires is just some time to dry. I gotta, I gotta open it up. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing here? Hold on. Oh my God. Wait a minute. I did a, I, I did something here. Wait, this is, yeah, I'm a professional. be like this. Come on. I glued the back cover, not the front cover. Oh my god, people! Let's do this again, shall we? I'm trying to do okay, this page to this page. Ay, ay, ay. I actually did that. I was gluing like I had three pages. So ignore that. And look at this, we're gluing this to this. So take two, Julia. Okay, here we're going. It's slightly different. I'm glad I caught that because that would have been, that would have been a little bit of tearing apart. You see how hard it is? I mean, you really have to pay attention uh, to what you're doing and of course, not that I'm not paying attention, it's just, it's hard to demonstrate in front of people, you know, it is, so I'll use that. Maybe I'm still having the effects of, of my vaccine. Now you could paper clip this uh, so it dries nicely. I'm gonna get some paper clips here and because you, you know, you want the book to have a nice clean edge. And so then we're gonna make a cover. That's why this is taking long today because we're, we're, we're putting it together uh, and then we're gonna do the cover. So we'll just sort of, I'm gonna just let this dry like, well, I can't, I guess. I'm gonna let it dry. Where will I let it dry? Okay, I'm gonna put it over here. You can't see where it is. I'll bring it out as 
as soon as I can. Now, for your uh, cover, you have cardboard in your uh, boxes. This is uh, called chipboard. Chipboard is a very um, medium heavy cardboard. And your pieces, you're gonna have to take a, a piece of chipboard for each one. Your pieces are nine, uh, your book is nine by 12, but your um, cardboards are only eight and a half by 11 because I was unable to get them nine by 12. So you're gonna take two pieces of your cardboard for this and you're gonna cut it down and you can cut it with scissors to nine and a half by six and a half. Um, and you need two pieces for the cover. Now, if you did not use all three pieces of your, um, remember when we were doing the, the oil pastel resist for the, uh, the stuffed sculpture later on in the unit, um, if you have a third piece, this will fit fine. If you don't, you'll have to use two pieces together with a little bit of a binding. I'll show you how to do that. But basically, to make a cover, you're going to do this. Can are you are you able to see this? Okay, everybody can see. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's good. All right. Um, because this also is confusing. I do have an a photograph of the shape of the paper that I put online, but I think this will also be very, very, very helpful if you can see it this way. And I'll do it with Sharpie so that you can uh, see it well. So uh, my book is gonna be only two pages. If you do more than three pages, sometimes the book, can, you know, I've had students make as many as 10 pages because they really got into this crazy, 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 wonderful. Uh, so once you, once you get your book glued together, um, you've got the spine here. You're going to separate your cardboards to just give your spine enough room. And the cardboards are a little bit larger than your folded paper so that the cover will be a little bigger. That It's just a nicer look. So I'm thinking for a two-page book, I'm going to put my spine about there. This is my spine. Okay, that's going to be what the end of the book is going to be. So now bear with me. Um, and one, one thing is true. Depending on your cutting skills or if you've used a, um, a paper cutter, your, your, books, your book covers might be a little askew. So I always mark where which one is which way because we're going to take these off and then we're going to um, put them back on again. So what you're going to do is you're going to trace very carefully around the edge. Now I don't suggest you use Sharpie because it'll, it might come through the paper but I'm using Sharpie so it shows up. Oh, this is B. This is a hello. Um, get the corners really well. Don't let the don't let the cardboard or the paper move. But the, you got to get each corner. You're going to see the corners are really crucial. And then in the spine area, just go straight across because that's going to be loose. Um, and then you 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 can. Oh wait, I should have done one more thing, Miss Julia. Watch out. And that is. You want, might want to mark where your spine is exactly. So you can place, place them Professor, back. Professor, what's the white paper that we're using underneath again? I think I missed, I didn't hear that. If you, um, if you, there were three pieces of white paper rolled up okay. in, um, and you only use two of them. If you don't have that anymore, I'm gonna show you how to do your cover putting two pieces of paper together, okay? Now, here is what's confusing. From every little point at each corner, okay? 
I'm going to make a dot there so you see what I'm talking about. See, from each little corner, because this is one side of your book cover, this is going to be the other. You have to go in like an envelope flap. So, like that, and like this. You can cover a lot of things. We'll be using this again when we make our paper sculpture. You don't have to measure it. You can just eyeball it as long as you're starting from the exact corner. You're going to get a really neat edge this way. Mine might have some Sharpie showing is all. But each section has to be like an envelope flap. A lot of people make a mistake, and this is what they do. They go like that. But when you would fold, let's just make a line across here. If you would fold that over as a book corner, what would you get? A bulky corner. You would get a wing sticking out. We don't want that. So so where the X's are, we're going to cut. OK? And then you're going to wind up with a big, I think the one I took a photograph of is with red construction paper. Uh, and and across, across where the spine is, you just cut straight. Um, so it would show up better. I took that photograph a while ago. I mean, you know, online teaching is not my cup of tea. I, I miss your personalities to some extent, although I guess I'm getting a little bit of that. Uh, I mean, I went, I went to a funeral this week on, uh, when was it, on Saturday on Zoom. That is the craziest thing. A funeral on Zoom. Lordy, lordy. But she didn't die of COVID. She died of old age. So. OK. So like sharing of a funeral virtually. It's been happening for a while for people who couldn't. Yeah, well, I just haven't had anybody. I've had people die, but they're all going to have their services after COVID uh, is, is dissipating. You know, they're all going to have memorials in person with, you know, people getting up and talking and food and, you know, that kind of you know, celebration, not, not just, you know, it's hard to celebrate. Okay, do you all see this like, template now? So because I have the A and the B, I know that I can put these right back here. And now something, when I make book covers, this is something, it took me 99 years to um, figure out, but you're getting it right away without any trouble. You don't have to glue this for a good fit. What you have to do is just tape it. I use masking tape for this step. It's not going to show. And you want to uh, do it very nicely along. You know, you want to fold this very nice. I'm going to go this way now. Uh, now, you should have in mind what you're going to do for your cover, because I don't want you to construct your book until your cover is satisfactory to you. I want to give you a chance that if you mess up, you can put another cover over your cover and cover your cover. Because uh, if you get your book glued in here and then you screw up the cover, it can really hurt. The cover should have your name on it, the title of the book, and some kind of an image. Um, I can tell when a cover has been rushed, you know, Wednesday afternoon at 4.30. Uh, before class. So please, I'd rather you, you gave it to me late and it's beautiful than you give it to me and rush it. Okay, you ready for seeing how beautiful this is? Ooh, look at the corners. Can you see how beautiful that is? Really an easy way of binding. So now what we're going to do is and I don't think I'll glue it in because I think I'll wait and see whether I want to add my third page. Um, 
Let's see if it's dry enough that I can lay it in here. Yeah. Okay, so this is my first page. And um, I'm going to, oh my goodness, I used the wrong side card. card. I'm, I'm wondering why I'm seeing this here. I use the cardboard I was telling you to use. I was supposed to use the smaller cardboard. Well, this is how we learn because now you're going to see that it won't be as beautiful of a, an edge. Um, normally, this would not show. So if I did a page out of the proper paper that I'm too cheap to use, let's see if I can get a piece of it. I think this is it. Bristleboard is expensive for whatever reason. Okay, so if this were if this were what I was gluing in, no, that's still a small piece. Oh my God. Hold on, let me go get one. I'm sure I have one somewhere in here. Uh, I'll just use a nine by twelve paper. I think this is a nine by twelve paper. Yeah, no. Well, Maybe it's not. Yeah. I'm not happy with this, folks. Let me measure this. I am not happy. I, I might have to change those measurements. Wait just a second. This I know is nine by 12 paper. Yeah, I, th I think you should probably make it um, a slightly different. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll change that measurement to nine and a half because nothing should show. The inside binding should be gorgeous. And uh, I don't like that. I don't like that I'm seeing that little bit of um, cardboard there. Yeah, you wrote nine and a half on the... Um... I write nine and a half, then it should be nine and a quarter. And yeah. what did I write? Six by six and what? Oh, that's yeah. a good question. Okay, well, it's going to be right under here. We can look it up. You just, I wrote it down. You just said nine and a half by six and a half. Nine and a half by, yeah, the, is that what it is? That's what you just said while you were constructing it, because I've been that's writing. The, oh, I wrote it too. I'm it sorry. Just, yeah. <laughs> It is six and a half. So uh, just take a half and in, a quarter of an inch off each side. So we're going to make it, and I'll, I'll remind myself nine, it'll be nine and one quarter by six and one quarter, because that then, then you won't get that. It'll still be a little bit bigger. I thought a half an inch would do it, but uh, I don't like how this looks. But anyway, so now, now this is the time when you make your cover. And then when you get your cover, how you like it, then what you're going to do is you're going to glue the book in. And mine is incredibly wrong because this is so much smaller um, and this is so much bigger. This is even bigger for the one you're doing. Um, I think if I were doing this for... Professor. Yeah. What if the, the little triangles that you were cutting out while you were creating the cover could you use them to sort of patch where the cardboard's peeking through? Oh, no, 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 I totally could fix this. I'm just trying to teach you the right way to begin with. Um, no, no, there's- yeah, I understand, but like to, you know, life yeah, and problems occur. No, 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 you could patch very easily. Uh, it, it may kind of show, I mean, I could do something you know, like this, and here, I'll, I'll just do this quickly. And then on this side, you know, glue this down. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. No, yeah, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't notice it. It's, it's not great, but it's better no, than no, nothing. <laughs> no, there's always a way to do it. But I just think the size is too big. And um, but I actually like that the car, the chipboard is a little bit bigger. It kind of looks like those golden books. Yeah, it, no, you know it, the, the, the paper is like recessed at like a quarter of an inch in from the actual it's edges of the cover. So, uh, and then when you're going to glue, again, 
you have to not glue where you have uh, stair steps. So for gluing this page onto this book, which I'm not gonna do because it's the wrong size um, and I'm not ready anyway, you would only glue here and then around here to the cover. Okay, so you would, you would glue along, if this were the cover I was using, which I'm not, uh, I would only glue here and here and here and then around the edge like that. Now let's talk about if uh, you don't have that white sheet of paper anymore. What you can do is take your two, two pieces of colored paper and um, put them side by side and then choose a binding paper that can have a contrasting color and you'll just glue the binding paper. This will be the inside, not the outside. You know, you'll, you'll make sure that you've got the right distance for how big your book is here. Oh, wait, are we doing it? Let's say no, wait, wait, wait. I wanna make sure I'm doing this right for you. Yeah. Um, and then, then what you can do is glue it, tape it, as long as it, and then flip this over to the right side and you'll have, you'll have something that'll look just like the other thing, although it'll be either colored or you can use white paper as well. But this, they'll be glued together. And then at that point, you can take your cardboards, you know, take your cardboards, do your tracing on this, but you're starting then with a colored thing, okay? Um, so do you understand that? Like if you don't have the larger paper, anymore, how to make it with um, smaller paper, yes? Yes. Okay, if anybody has a question on that, let me know. Um, and I will try to uh, post, <laughs> won't be tomorrow, I've got a wicked day, but uh, I will try to post this done correctly. I'm sorry I used the wrong cardboard because I, I went to the trouble of cutting the right size cardboard for this little one that I have. Um, all right, so um, don't glue it together until, remember, you're happy with the cover. If you mess up the cover, and the cover should be horizontal because the book is horizontal. Don't make the cover this way, and then they have to open it up and do it this way. So the book is a horizontal book. The reason we do it that way is the uh, pop-ups are a lot easier to learn and do. Um, if you really get into paper engineering, there are many, many ways uh, to get things to pop up. But uh, I'm just trying to teach it so that you can teach kids this process. Okay. Um, you know, another thing, Amelia, it just occurred to me, I could just put a strip here. I wouldn't even have to have it flipped over. You know, I could just do this. And Professor, we're supposed to make a cover relevant, a cover page um, of our book in a back or just a cover? No, this is a front and a back. Oh, you don't have to like draw the back unless, unless you, you know, you want to. But we, we should have a cover page, a drawn picture on the front. You should have some kind of element of drawing on the front. On the okay. back, it's up to you. I mean, some people feel like they can have some fun with it. My, um, Oh, I should show you next week. My son-in-law is a children's book writer and author and illustrator who's won some prizes. And um, he always has hidden things on his covers, sometimes inside his covers and throughout the book. Um, and he just had a new book come out, I think this week. He's got a series called Baloney and Friends, which are, it's a, like a zine type book very short stories for young readers. Anyway, his name is Greg Pizzoli. And Ooh. Una Pizzoli, oh my God, I gotta show you Una as a bag lady. Oh my God. 
I sent someone a picture of her today. Who was that? Was that you, Amelia? Who was it? Yeah, you sent that to me. She's is so it, cute. That, I like that. Photo? <laughs> that is Una yesterday. And, um, you know, I said to my daughter, uh, it's bag lady style, and she said, well, you know, we like to mix and match all the uh, hand-me-downs we get from friends. <laughs> it's really cute. It's super cute. He, he has a lot of books. Professor. Oh, Professor Zoli, yeah. He's only 37. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's amazing. Um, Professor, yeah. I was lucky enough to um, go to a, um, an event at the Center for Book Arts. Yeah. On 18th Street. Yeah. That's a really interesting place to look at. Yeah. Um, book it construction is. and, um, you know, unusual books and all that stuff. Oh, they... They have great things where they're sculpted. It's a really fun, fun place. Yes. I recommend and it highly. I think that a lot of our, um, I could do a whole course at QCC just on book arts. I could do it for adults. It would be a lot of fun where we would really get into binding and things like that, you know, uh, but we would need the facilities. We're doing very bare bones stuff here, but um, anyway. Um, now I'm gonna just tell my my um, 130 people one more thing, which is, um, and I guess if if you don't have time to do this, take a big deep breath, and you know I can wait a week or two, but uh, I I I gave you this great patterned paper, um, yeah. and uh, I'm only asking you to do for homework a really quick collage with it and see what you can come up with. It could be abstract. Uh, I did put a sample on, um, put a sample on a blackboard, but uh, it's just, it's just kooky kind of optical black and white. So you could put it on a piece of white paper, you know, just plain old white paper uh, and cut out and collage. You can rip it for all I care. Sure, why not? You that one reminds me of Agnes Martin, the painter. Yeah, yeah. And we or you have, could um, put it on black paper or who knows, colored paper if you like. Do we have these printouts in our box or it's something? You should have a packet of these in your box. Okay. In, in the folder, there was some papers in like a manila folder. I have to hide my box from my children, so I'll have to go. <laughs> Let me know if you have a problem with that. Um, Okay, so that's that's the homework, and I'll probably be easy on on you all because I, I I do think the pop up is a lot of work, and I'm expecting some Zoom calls. Now, I'm anxious to get to 131 in order then to uh, do some private Zooms tonight if anybody needs it. So anybody in 130 want to come back into the room in a little while, or just you know I'll leave the Zoom open, but anybody really stuck or need well, one professor, one. I need to do some art drawing with you but I'm I'm really I'm not tonight it. I don't think yeah, yeah I was gonna say I'm not feeling well either way and I, I, I think you're I, I think you're wrong your drawing is fine but um okay so I'll, I'll <laughs> um I won't share the powerpoints tonight because I really want to I really want to figure out what I'm doing in terms of the sharing and the meeting and the blah 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 um so I may just choose to um, do two clobs of things and we'll have to figure it out. But I'm just very happy this is working and I'm, I'm not gonna go back to looking at me anytime soon tonight. Um, all right, so anybody uh, need to come into the room from 1.30 after 1.31 is done? Uh, I'm not sure I might. <laughs> okay, well, I guess just come back in the room. Yep. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna leave the Zoom on. If for some reason I am in the kitchen or something like that, uh, just text me. Got it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm gonna turn my mic off and sort of focus on my work and Nick is gonna be home soon, so. Okay, okay, all good. Uh, and we'll talk about that catalog. That's really interesting. I love uh, it. I know my gallery I is- I found it. My gallery is selling that for, I don't know. I hope you didn't pay more than $175 for it. No, I paid like $18 for it. Oh my God, they didn't know. No. 
that it's they didn't know because I did a search for your current works and it's significantly more than eighteen dollars just wow. the cover alone. I think that it weren't aware. The they they spoke to you in loving the terms them, and they were um, they so like, screen. Yeah, yeah, they spoke of you in really loving terms and everything, but I don't believe they knew what they had. I looked out. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I used to have a gallery there. Yes. In Ten, Susan mm -hmm. Whitney Gallery. And uh, I do know some people from there. And I don't know, maybe the gallery downsized or 